You know, my first dog that was really mine, once I got out on my own, was uh, my old dog, Ruff. You know, you always hear the old saying, you only get one good dog in a lifetime, and I pray to God it's not true, because he, he was it, that was the one. Good boy. I got him out of a kennel up in Wisconsin and was single at the time, didn't have family and had rough. I mean, that was it. He was my family. And we spent an uncountable amount of time together. I mean, we were never hardly apart. I mean, I used to take him into the office with me and the girls would spoil him with biscuits and donuts and everything else. And he'd lay at my feet while I had appointments and he was that dog. Ruff was the kind of dog that, that made me look good. I mean, he, he did. I mean, he had so much natural ability and drive. I mean, the drive is, is just incredible. I mean, I've seen him when it's been zero and we've been on the river and countless trips in and out of that water. By the time you get back to the boat ramp, solid sheet of ice. I mean, he's just completely covered. Vest, every hair is covered nice. And all he wanted to do was, was go do it again. Even when things were tough and there wasn't anything flying, he was just filled with hope. I mean, he couldn't wait to get out there and do it. Just the little things like laying in a layout blind and snow geese are kind of done fine. You know, it's, it's midday and like, oh, you just kind of lay your head back and close your eyes for a second, just a, a little brief sense of rest. And then you feel it. I mean, he wanted to be as close as he could to you at all times. There was just that unexplainable bond. I mean, it was so strong with him. You know, Ruff had had an unbelievable career. I mean, he picked up over 25,000 birds. He was my only dog back then, and, and he went every single day. And it was hard on him, and it, it took a toll. I don't know, it's kind of a, a catch-22. I mean, you want to see him, you want to see him live forever, but they're tough to watch when they're not in their prime, you know going downhill. And he definitely, definitely started going downhill. He, uh, his back hips kind of quit working. It's just, it's not something that, that you ever want to, you ever want to see happen, but it happens every day. And, uh, you know, I drove, come home from work for six months just praying that, that he wouldn't be awake. You know, that he would just Pass gracefully in his sleep, but too much fight. So it's like November 10th, 2014, and it's 76 degrees in the afternoon. And I finally come to peace with, with the decision of putting him down. It's hot out, big front coming in, massive front. So you know what? I'm gonna take him with. I want him to just see one last time. So I picked him up and, and put him in my truck and we got there and I had to lift him up and, and put him in the ranger and Ruff and I sat outside the blind next to a big tree with his, his head in my lap, just watching. It was probably 15 minutes after we got there, first bunch of mallards comes over the trees Food's calling at them to make one little hook and come right in the front of the blind and, and they kill three or four of them or whatever and one of them fell right 15 yards in front of us. And I heard him start whimpering. I'm like, oh man, it's kind of killing me, you know? And pretty soon I'll be damned, he, he stood up on his front legs and his back was just wobbling like this and he finally got it up off the ground and it was the uh, it was the most memorable retrieve out of twenty five plus thousand. This is last.
Oh, what a dog. Good Lord, I'm gonna miss him. You know they have that drive. I mean, there's no doubt that he wanted to, to go get that last duck, knowing that it hurt. Take your time, old boy. You earned it. That being said, I'd say there's, in the condition that he was in, he did it for me more than, more than himself. I'll never forget, like, just sitting there, his head's in my lap, just holding his head, and just looking into those big, soft eyes. You could tell that uh, the time had, had taken a toll. Looking into them the last time when they uh, gave him a shot. And it was pretty tough. Closed his eyes last time my lap and uh, took him back. And the boys were, were hunting in our favorite hole. I've seen a rough make countless retrieves there and wrapped him up in a, his favorite blanket, which was this camel blanket my grandma made for me. Just me and a rougher dug a hole and was burying him and, you know, like kind of on cue, a little, little bunch of ducks comes over the trees and nobody's calling, nothing. Makes a couple swings in the hole and dips in. And goes on, kind of like a salute. Pretty cool. That's pretty neat. You know, they say you only get one good dog in a lifetime, and it's not the case, and I'm happy to say that. I've got one of Ruff's sons now, Kai, and he's got it. I mean, he's gonna be very, very special. I don't know if he's gonna be a rough, but he's gonna be a Kai, and he's gonna have his own unbelievable characteristics and talents. I mean, that bond, that sixth sense that dogs have, I mean, you can't explain it. You just sit back and, and thank God that, that you get to hunt with him every day.